Shirley Lawson, I'm delighted to be hosting this uh, hosting this session for Blair on using iPads in the classroom, specifically the Notes app. Hi Blair, how, how's your day been so far? Very busy. We did an Olympic steam day today, so we've been uh, doing a lot of running about and things, but it's been great fun. <laughs> Uh, uh, good, yes, a bit, a bit of a rush to get to the webinar for the end of the day, but thank you so much. And we've had a tremendous number of people sign up for it. I think the latest figure was 685. So I think that's what happens when you book a celebrity teacher for a webinar there. So <laughs> we're delighted to have you along. It's great to be able to reach a wide range of educators from all over the world. And I know for one, I'll, I'll be sitting back and listening and learning as there, there's nothing better than um, hearing from an experienced practitioner and really finding out what works in a classroom setting. And of course, what doesn't work as well and, and how we learn from that. So today, Blair's going to present for about 20 minutes and then we'll be happy to answer any of your questions at the end. So please do type your questions in the chat panel as we go along um, and I'll collate them and then and then ask them to Blair at the end. So uh, and just a reminder that the session will be recorded. So you'll get a you'll be sent a, a, the recording. Um, I think probably tomorrow it will be emailed on to you. So. Uh, right, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you now, Blair, so thank you. Thanks so much. OK, hello, everybody. I can see there's so many people here. It's very humbling. Um, I'll just try to do my best. Uh, I am not an expert in this one bit, um, but I have had some, I guess, success uh, with it in the classroom, but that's really all down to the learners. I'm just a, a the mug who tried it out really. <laughs> so um, yes, this is all about using the notes app uh, with literacy, but in other curricular areas too. And if you do have an iPad or an iPhone on you, you might want to give this a wee go as we go through it. So um, I'm basically going to tell you how to do it, is what I'm going to do, but give you some examples as well. Um, so just before I do, I always like to uh, plug other things and it this is a great wee app very quickly. It's called Seeing AI. Um, it was touted as the app for the blind when I was at a presentation. It's just an incredible, incredible piece of kit. It's free as well. Basically, you point the camera on your tablet or phone at anything and it will read it. So you can even point it at your face. And when I pointed it at my face, it said, 40 year old man with a beard and brown hair which wasn't very nice. I'm not quite that old yet, but <laughs> never mind. Um, but yeah, it'll read anything. And so um, I think there's a wee picture there of, um, I have pupils, especially when I was down in primary two, and then in primary three, um, pupils who obviously struggle to um, access texts, but with the iPad, they just put it on and they, it would read it to them. And you can slow down the speech or you can speed it up. You can even change the voices on it too. So just a wee shout out for that as well. Um, it's a very, very useful app and can be used, you know, in a kind of in tandem or in conjunction when you're using notes. So if pupils are note taking, they can even, you know, read from that and then use the speech to text uh, on the notes app. So sorry, that's that given a wee plug. Um, so I'm going to really talk about how I used this in primary three, which was last year, just after the pandemic. Now, in primary three, I had some fantastic writers. Uh, this is fantastic work, isn't it? Here. Uh, lovely, neat finger spaces, uh, spelling um, exactly, you know, uh, sorry, phonics, letters where they should be on the line, uh, great spelling practice too. Um, I also had pupils who struggled, of course, and kind of, you know, take a moment to think, you know, what is that child feeling in that classroom when they're seeing all the other people say, so you know what they're like, they're so eager to share their work, aren't they? And rightly so, they should be celebrating all the great things that they did. But, um, you know, if we've got um, pupils who maybe are, are struggling and that, it, it's about making the classroom inclusive. And um, that's always been my aim as well. And I know some people, you know, uh, give it the, oh, everybody needs to learn to write. And yes, they do. But what I'm hopefully going to show you is that through the use of speech to technology, it builds that confidence. It also allows them, especially with grammar and with punctuation, um, that becomes much more fluent as well. And um, I found people's um, doing great works. And I, I mean, do you believe they could be an author of a poem like this in a book, you know, published and things? Because that's the same child who you just saw um, in that last book there. But this is obviously with speech to text 
and they were able to create um, this poem. It's about the global goal, this global goal number 15. Um, so yeah, so it makes it for a really inclusive space and, and allows them all to access what you're doing. So uh, without further ado, the Notes app on the iPad is truly underrated. It is just an amazing, amazing piece of kit. And I think it's key to note as well at this point is that Apple isn't developing it for schools specifically. They're developing it because of Alexa, because of all this speech to technology in your, your house. It's, it's competitive, isn't it? And it's a big selling point. And so speech to technology, there's a lot, a lot of money going into developing it and making it better. And every update as well, I'm finding, I use them on my phone. When I'm walking the dog, I do too much stuff online, far too much content stuff. And I find walking the dog, I can um, type. Um, so I use speech to text as I walk now as well. And it's just, it's picking up my Scottish accent so much better than it ever did. <laughs> Which I know I always have questions about that, about dialect. Well, it's getting much, much better. So notes, it's free, of course. It comes, it's stock app. It comes on every single iPad. It is the most simple interface uh, there is. It auto saves. And if you link your iPads all together, if you've got a teacher iPad, it will come up automatically on your iPad so you can edit it in real time with them as well. It's incredibly easy to share. Even if you don't have that feature, they can just airdrop it. And I often had, even in P3, but in primary six, I have them airdrop it to my phone. I feel a bit cheeky at times. Like if I don't have an iPad, I'm like, oh no, the teacher iPad is being used by P7. I'll be like, just airdrop it to my phone. Um, and then it's right there. And the key thing, which I'm here to speak about, seeing as this is called Scotland, of course, is all the accessibility tools. So if you do have your phone or your iPad or whatever with you, this is maybe where you want to start playing about with it. So um, yeah, the speech to text function is fantastic. Um, it comes up as a little microphone at the bottom of your keyboard and apps. You tap it, it comes up with, um, it's like a wee sound monitoring thing that you'd see in a recording studio or whatever. And when you speak, it will start to place your words on the screen. I love doing it, especially when I went to a P1 and started doing it. Kids think it's like magic. It's lovely. <laughs> they can't read it, but they think it's like magic and it's great. If you want to turn this on, okay, where do you go to? Well, you would go to your settings on your phone. Do you know, if I do it at the same time, then I know I'm going at the right speed. So if you go settings, and then if you scroll to general, it's like in the third table usually. And then if you go to keyboard, one, two, three, the fourth white table there. Once you get in there, there are an absolute ton of features which are really handy. Auto correction, auto capitalization, checking spelling, uh, predictive text, which I'll come to, which is really handy for them. But if you scroll down a bit, you'll get to enable dictation. And so long as that's on, when you go to type a text or you go onto a notes app or WhatsApp or even Twitter, when you click on your keyboard, that little microphone should now be there and you should be able to use that. Um, so it really is that easy just to get it set up. Um, when you're using speech to text, you do need to give it the punctuation. So if I was saying, my name is Blair and I am a teacher, full stop. Need to make sure that you're putting those in. If you wanted to take a new line, you just say things like new line, capital letter, and I actually think that's really good. I don't know if anybody does Kung Fu punctuation or uh, any of these sorts of things um, in the classroom, but you know, when their kids are actually speaking aloud or they're acting out uh, and motioning their punctuation, um, it's really useful for that as well. And I, I think it's a great wee tool for kids to really think about where that punctuation goes. Um, so that's speech to text. Another option as well, um, which helps is predictive text. Because I found that um, some of my class like to use speech to text, but sometimes they were like, I'd like to type. Go for it, go and have a go at typing. Um, and as you type, of course, if you switch on your predictive text on that keyboard settings, thing that I just kind of talked through, um, yeah, it'll now start to ping these words up uh, when you're typing. And that's really, really useful for children, especially when they're going for more complex and ambitious vocabulary um, as well. Um, so yeah, that's very useful. Um, this is fantastic as well. It's uh, to hear your words read back. So sometimes you know, the kids are very good at speaking it, but it, the iPad won't always pick up. There's It's speech to text. And of course, when they're primary two, primary three, especially, you know, not all the pronunciation is as it should be. Um, so sometimes there's little errors. 
but getting them to listen back to their work is really useful. So again, if you've got your iPhone or iPad or whatever, uh, for this, if you go back to general, sorry, if you go to settings and then general, where you were, and if you scroll down to accessibility, it's in, I think, that third panel again. One, two, three. Yeah, and it's got a little, um, it's a blue icon with a person standing in the middle. If you go into accessibility, and then you go down to spoken content, in there, it, there's an option you can switch on, which is called speak selection. And hopefully that's on my slide now, what you can see. If you turn on speak selection, what you can do is when you go back to your notes app, if you highlight the text, that little uh, speak option will come up. The kids just tap that and it reads it back to them. Um, you can, you'll see there as well on my slide, you can change the voice. You can even download voices now. Like, I don't know if you can see them. Every language as well. For EAL pupils, it'll speak in Arabic, in Urdu, in German, Hungarian, like everything's there. So it'll read it back. So it'll even translate it in real time. And the little tortoise in here, you can slow down or speed up the speaking rate as well, depending on you know where the child is at with their learning and their listening. There's also a really nice thing there called speak screen. Personally, I wouldn't turn that on because you swipe down with two fingers and it'll read the whole screen, but there's, no, as far as I'm aware, there's no way of stopping it. So if they've typed quite a bit and they swipe down, you've got to wait until it's finished saying everything. So I would just leave that off and stick with it, speak selection. Um, but that's really, really handy as well for the kids. And I should say as well, um, it highlights the words as it goes along so they can actually follow what word it's on and they can hear, especially if you slow it right down, they can see what word's wrong and then they can re-record it or use predictive text to um, edit it and adapt it. I hope this is all making sense. I do apologize. <laughs> there is no. Um, and then a, a final feature, which is really handy, is with notes, it's so easy to draw a picture. So, so easy to do. Uh, that's a terrible one I quickly did. Uh, <laughs> there, this is a picture that I drew using my phone. But again, in your notes app, there's a wee uh, pen icon. And if you go in there, it's actually very intuitive and there's lots and lots of options. There's a paintbrush, a pen, a ruler, uh, loads and loads of different colors. If you've updated to the latest iOS, um, there's some shapes you can add in. You can even add things like speech bubbles and then write in the speech bubbles. So that's great, especially when the kids have finished the story, you know, and they're doing it on an iPad. Well, do me a picture as well. And that can be airdropped and printed out, which is lovely. What's another great feature as well is rather than uh, drawing it, they can also take pictures. And um, so this is um, a wee bit of work that a pupil in primary three did for me, um, summarizing a story he was reading, Biff and Kip. Um, and I think you can see as well that like, that's a Biff and Chip book, like that is so basic, but the work you can get out of that whilst using notes is, and this is a pupil who really, really did struggle with writing simple CBC words. So to be able to do that independently is, is um, it's great. Obviously it takes a bit of practice and I'll show you that in just a second. But it's really, really good as well. If they're you know, trying to explain something that they've been doing, they can just take a photo of it in the classroom and add it in. You can crop those photos, you can make them smaller, you can add lots and lots of photos. So they end up making like a comic strip or a book. Really good for cross-curricular drama or even if you're outside doing more kind of learning for sustainability things, you know, if you're finding, I don't know, different kinds of leaves or categorizing things in maths, it's just such, such a handy way for them to compile all their work uh, together. Uh, so some examples, a uh, proper example. So I would say start small. I had, the reason I kind of began this properly, in primary three, I had a pupil who, oh, wonderful, wonderful pupil, but really, really struggled with uh, reading, well, everything literacy, reading, writing, listening, at all. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, yep, basic CBC words weren't there, the alphabet wasn't there, your basic phonics weren't there at all. But coherent stories and summaries of what happened in the playground and what they were doing at night, they could tell me that. And I thought, there's got to be a way to get this down. And uh, so I thought, well, I use speech to text, let's try it out here. And uh, yeah, I just started small. I just kind of said, well, tell me what you were, you know, doing at lunchtime or tell me what you were doing uh, when you went home at night and things. And, and this is what we first came up with. Um, now, if there was a wee bit of one-in-one, one-to-one, -one, sorry, here. 
teaching them obviously how to use the technology about full stops at the end of lines. You can see as well, yeah, it's very repetitive, isn't it? The, they, they, there, they. But it's fine because this is at the start, you know, just getting used to it. And I think they really, um, these people as well, really did enjoy getting to draw their picture um, at the end. But I started to print these out uh, and stick them into their jotter as well. And I was saying, you are an author. Look, you are a writer. This is great. I write on my phone, you know. <laughs> um, so starting small. Then it got better. And this was an actual story. So we were doing it as a class that was about, um, I, there's a wee scene in A Bug's Life where this fly flies into a light and goes, Meow. I love it. It's great. Anyway, I use that um, for a wee writing stimulus now and again. And um, this was with primary three. So this child is now not doing his own thing. He was involved with the whole class, just rather than in the jotter using the iPad. And uh, yeah, there's a wee bit of support from um, my pupil support assistants put in this punctuation, especially things like uh, and speech marks. But oh, 95% of that is the child's work again. And you can see, um, you know, being able to access that, whereas previously you saw their jotter, what they'd you know be able to do in their jotter in the lesson. Um, yeah. And so that was kind of that child. Um, just to show you as well, this is primary six. Um, so I currently have a primary six. This is the sort of thing that they are able to put together um, with speech to text, which is just, yeah, mind boggling. I would say the one on the right about the Chinese Zodiac, that is a very able pupil who was using both predictive and speech. But I would say that was rattled out in about 10 minutes which just shows you the speed at which they can start to throw these things together. And that's a primary six. On the left, um, again, uh, very uh, uh, unable people, again, writing a wee article there. Um, but they were able to kind of walk around the classroom and ask, it was a journalism piece, and they were just asking kids, you know, on the fly, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And then just popping it all um, into the iPad that way, getting the photos off the internet and sticking them into it. Um, I think, I mean, it's lovely to see kids written work as well. I've just related to me. just done a whole newspaper assessment thing with my kids so I, I get it but I'll we have to be honest hey, this is much more polished it's much more easy for other children to read as well if they're peer assessing it's so much easier to edit I think as well you know no more rubbers no more scrolling out things oh I forgot to put in paragraphs oh no the iPad makes it so much easier and I as we move in Scotland towards one-to-one -one devices more to more I think this is such a fantastic um, app, <laughs> it is. And it's, it's, you know, it's free, it's basic, it comes on iPads and yeah, you can do amazing things with it. And I use it as much as possible. I don't know about you guys, if you've got one-to-one, -one, I get our, we get our one-to-one -one devices in June. So I am very, very excited <laughs> about that happening for us. Um, Shirley, I don't know if I've waffled on and on and on there. I think that's about 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, um, if you want to fire me any questions, not here or whatever, you can always get me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm very happy to chat there. But um, yeah, I hope that was useful. <laughs> no, that was great. And, and uh, yeah, so there's been quite a few questions coming in, some which have, uh, Paul has been uh, answering in in, uh, in the chat panel. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I don't know who that was in there. Um, so just a couple there. There's, so for the Seeing AI app, um, the question was, can it translate into different languages? Um, off the top of my head, no. Um, I would say if you want to do that for your English as additional language pupils, Google Translate has the same feature now. So if you hold that over a piece of text, it will translate it in real time. What I have been told, I had a Portuguese pupil who said it was pretty good, but some of it didn't quite make sense. So I think that's still something to work on. But I know that that same pupil said with the notes app, when it's doing the speak back to them, um, it, it's perfect. And I think as well with the seeing AI, what you can do is you can screenshot that, you can copy it into notes, and then it will speak it back to them there as well. So it can be used in conjunction, if that makes sense. Oh, that's good. Yes, no, that, that is good to, to know. And another question that came in and, and uh, not that you need to know the answers to everything, but just to say, you know, what, what do you think you're getting with the notes app that you wouldn't get uh, if you were using Word Online on the iPad with if you had the accessibility features all switched on? De definitely. Um, not too much more. I love immersive reader and everything else. I think it depends on your setting and your context. 
we haven't really got our pupils working with Word and PowerPoint at the moment just because our local authority, the way it's kind of set up here, and in primary schools as well, they all kind of need an individual office account. And um, we found for a lot of that, they want to save the work. And that's just been, I know we had, you know, online learning and teams and things, but it's still quite difficult for us to facilitate that. We're a school of 300 and so, and we've only got 30 iPads. So having the kids log in and out and things is a bit difficult. When they get one-to-one, -one, I think we'll look at Word more. But for the time being, Notes is a really good one. And I think for down the school as well, it, it, I find, personally, I find Notes easier to use than Word uh, down the school. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine quite a few things will change when, you've got, when you get your one-to-one -one iPads and yeah, it, everyone being set up that way. And will they go through Glow to access that, Blair? Uh, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. Edinburgh, we don't really use Glow here. So, <laughs> yeah, one of those things. That's somebody higher up <laughs> than me. Right. Um, another couple of questions that have uh, come in. Uh, Mr. Callahan was just saying for a, for a pupil of visual impairment, um, how would you make the text in notes, the notes app bigger? Um, which Ooh. is a good question. Um, I, I, Paul did put something in, but is that something that you've come across for pupils in your class? There is there is a way to do it. I remember being shown, but could I tell you off the top of my head? No, I'd have to foot her around. So if Paul knows, yeah. that's great. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think there is a way to do it. I'm pretty sure there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think just in settings uh, under the accessibility, you can chart, change it to large font, you know, so that everything appears in much bigger font. And that would be the same for the Notes app. Uh, as well. So um, a question that came in about uh, Tracy was asking when you're using uh, the microphone and uh, you weren't using Siri, is there a way that you can activate the mic without touching the mic icon? Oh, um, no. on the notes app, no, I don't think so. I think it does need to be pressed. I have, um, I did go through a bit with my headphones. If you've got, you know, the Apple headphones with the wee button. Um, and if you do press the middle button, it'll switch on your Surrey, like if you hold it down. So um, it should do the same for dictation on that. The problem is it's, it is only the Apple iPhones with the wee Apple jack. I know they're uh, expensive. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Um, no, not an easy one for that fix, sorry. No. Um, and Debbie was asking, say, would you say this is a good way to motivate learners who choose not to write? Uh, she says she's struggling with a learner who chooses not to write for reasons that are still slightly unknown. Fair enough. Um, yes, I would say I, when I decided to do, I mean, I, I know I'm hindering on this one pupil. I've used it with quite a few, though, um, both at P7 and down the school as well. I think it is. Yeah, I think they like that it's clear, that it's easy to edit. They don't need to worry about their handwriting. Uh, there's a lot of things that appeal to them with it. I think a screen as well. Kids love a screen. I love a screen. Kids do uh, love a screen. So. <laughs> uh, another one in from Shona, which was definitely on the topic that I was going to ask you, just as she's talking about working with pupils with speech difficulties, any good tricks? So really thinking, you know, somebody who has perhaps indistinct speech, uh, they want to use Siri, they want to, but it's just not picking up their voice. Have you had instances of that with your pupils? Yeah, I had a French pupil who had a very strong accent and uh, got quite frustrated with it not picking up what they were saying. Um, I, do I have it, any tips for it? No, sadly. I think we tried to do fun games. We did it kind of the whole class way about, you know, pronouncing your T's and things like this. But um, no, and, and I know as well, you know, um, there'll be people who, yeah, that's a real issue for. Um, I don't know if there's an easy answer again with notes for, for those individuals, sadly. Yeah, I think in, in any of the, the sort of support we've been doing with uh, young people who are speech recognition is just not going to work. We like to think, well, you know, maybe just try using audio notes. So they're still not having to write or type, but they're obviously the text is not appearing on the screen, but they're still, you know, being provided with a way to record their answers um, that could then be future use for assessment or revision yeah definitely i don't know um, if just i mean 
growing off a wee bit. Um, Clips as an app, again, is now that's a stock app on any Apple iPad or iPhone. It is a movie app, but it's got this feature where you can put like posters in the background. Uh, so you wouldn't even have to film the face. Uh, and that's kind of like a audio clips, if you like, but that's very easy to edit as well. So maybe that's something to look into because you can present the kids' work really nicely that way and actually share it. So, um, yeah, maybe that. I don't know. Looking into yeah, it. it's, it's a fun app to use clips, definitely. And that, very, that's a good idea of uh, using it. And just in terms of a busy classroom, when you've got lots of kids um, using Surrey, how are you finding it? Uh, you know, how does it pick up their individual voices if there's maybe a few of them working together in a group and they're all speaking into their own iPad? Yeah, um, if you could get them headphones, amazing. Uh, that helps. Um, I found, though, with a P3 class, I did a whole terms worth. Like every Wednesday we did it with speech to text and the iPads out. If they were just kind of even pulling the desks slightly apart, I didn't find any issues with it. Um, if it's a noisy class, and it is, the thing is as well, obviously it's a writing lesson, you've got 33 kids speaking. <laughs> so it is going to be loud. But that's fine. Where it does fall down is if you know that, yeah, why? It was like my classroom today, where you know they're really enjoying themselves and there's a wee bit of laughter and things like that going on. Yeah, that's when it'll fall down. So if you're using it as a whole class, I would say you've got to, yeah, you've got to think about the volume and kind of say to them, this is writing time, you know. <laughs> We've done all the collaborative planning, maybe we did it through drama or whatever. Great, right? Uh, we need to be quiet and on task. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, um, another question that has come up, which has uh, uh, been immediately answered by Craig, but I'll say it anyway, because I know it's, it's all these things that work really well in the classroom, but then you've got logistical problems. So the, this one that's Mrs. Switzer is mentioning, she's looking for any tips on how to print quickly after pupils have airdropped their work. Um, they can't print from teacher iPads and then have to save to glow and then log in from the PC and print. Um, and Craig oh, that's is annoying. That's very oh, yeah. annoying, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. Things that I've done in the past before our iPad was connected to the printer, um, screenshot it. So then you just whip it off as a photo of your iPad. And you can even like take the photos into, I usually put it in PowerPoint because you can fit two on a screen and then just print the slides out. That's one way. Um, email it to yourself. Copy all the text and email it. That's another way, I guess. So it's, you know, you can print it off that way. Um, that's a bit annoying if your iPad doesn't connect to a printer. Yeah. Yes. But there's the two ways I've done it previously. <laughs> well, Craig's got a hard, hard wiring solution of a USB camera connector kit attached to a USB pen drive. Um, and then you save it to the files um, and then just use the USB with your, it's a kind of two-step process again, but at least it allows you to be able to um, print, but obviously an air printer would be the best thing, but I know they're uh, not that common in schools to have that. No. Um, I think I've got through most of the questions. There's been quite a lot coming in, so I'm just scrolling up and down, but um, if anyone else has a, a another question before we uh, wrap up, I would like to say a big thank you to Blair for, for sharing his expertise and, and his time. Um, and uh, It's been great. It's been really good. It's always good to hear what's going on in the, on in the classroom. And um, Blair's going to be having one of our slots at our ASL and technical.